welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And this is, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Season five, episode 10. This is called, oh, uh, this is not what that's called. Hold on, sorry, I am getting ahead of myself again. Um, I, so if you can't, if, if you can't tell, I'll, I'll put the episode in the description because um, I'm going to move on. But I actually am watching the episode as I'm reviewing right now um, live on Bravo. And um, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into the episode. And um, <laughs> side note, yes, I'm still not on camera, but I just got done watching three. This is my third housewife show I'm watching. So it's back to back to back. So bear with me. But anyway, this episode starts, picks up where we left off. They have the brief um, Real Housewives montage. They're all back in um, the Salt Lake City area. And um, we see a preview of Mary getting ready for like a breakfast at Mary's, aka breakfast at Tiffany's type of event she's going to put together her house. And she's working with the event planners. And they're kind of telling a story of not all the friends are getting along. So how is this going to go type situation? And then from there, they do start off with a real housewives, <coughs> real housewives montage where we have, um, Whitney with her son playing soccer. And then we see that, um, Angie's with her daughter, Electra, and they're, doing stuff with plants. And then from there, we do go to our first scene where we see that, um, and we see that um, Bronwyn is talking to Todd. Um, I think this is actually kind of a dual scene. So there's this going on. I'm trying to remember if this was the first scene or the other scene was the first scene. So it might not be in quite the same order. But basically, um, Bronwyn's recapping the trip with Todd and Todd was honestly disgusted by Bronwyn's behavior and kind of disappointed because he feels like, uh, she lowered herself to get down and dirty with the ladies and she, he does not appreciate that. And I feel bad for Bronwyn because I feel like at this moment, she feels like she doesn't have a safe space. And right now it doesn't seem like she does at this moment. And also now she's like, was hurt by, you know, her trying to navigate her friendship with Lisa. And at the same time, she also feels like she doesn't have a safe place. And now she feels even extra hurt that she disappointed Todd because Todd's approval means everything to her. And so, um, she basically, Todd wants her to behave the way he would behave, which is internalize it or, and, or, you know, if your friends make you react that way, they're not your friends, which Yes, in real life, that's definitely the case. But since she's on the show, it's not quite like that. And I'm I'm a little worried. I'm a little concerned. I'm not sure if this is going to be... I feel like Bronwyn might be one and done because of how Todd is reacting to all this. Because he does not seem to be on board when it comes to reality TV situation of any of it. He's like, I don't like this. This is not demure. This is not mindful. He's not into it at all. Um, but... I definitely, there's more to come with that because Bronwyn, um, yeah, Bronwyn still isn't really, I feel like she doesn't have a safe space, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but more to come with that. And then from there, we see Lisa is um, at this hat shop and she meets, she ends up meeting Heather and Lisa still does not have the story straight on what's going on and tells Heather her version of the truth, which is still not really what it is at all. And Heather is still doing her manipulative, normal stuff that she does. And Heather thinks she really is that girl. And she's like, you know, I guess I'm going to teach Bronwyn how to act when it comes to this group. I mean, it really came off that way. And at this point, I, I hope Todd's words did not stop Bronwyn for speaking her speech because I do not want to nerf Bronwyn. I need Bronwyn to go in on these ladies once she finds out what was said. Um, but yeah, at the end of the scene, I'm still just looking at Heather like, girl, girl. 
And Lisa is still doing what Lisa does, which is still only seeing... There, there's clearly an alliance here between the OGs and the new people. And really, this scene kind of solidified it. And yeah, I'm hoping someone breaks it up. And I, in my head, based off of the way the uh, mid-season trailer went, I feel like Whitney's going to be someone who breaks it up. But anyway, that's all that happens here. Moving on. Next, we have a super touching scene with... Um, Oh, sorry, sorry. Angie and um, her dad. Um, she basically makes her dad dinner. And we find out that Electra is with Sean going horseback riding. And this kind of prompts a conversation when it comes to how Angie's doing as a mom, raising her daughter. And it also brought out a mo. So this was a pretty emotional scene. I'll just say that. It was, it was super emotional because... Unbeknownst to us, we didn't know this, but um, Angie has had a lot of hurt, has been holding on to a lot of hurt and resentment towards, you know, her mom leaving. Um, and by leaving, I mean, you know, no longer being with us because of the fact that alcoholism, you know, won. Um, she died about, she, she died because of that. And... Um, she was basically venting with her dad about it. And what prompted this is that she was cleaning Electra's room and she found a necklace that is literally a, a gift that her friends gave to her to give to her daughter in memory of her mom. And when she had the necklace, she did not feel the way she thought. She, when she held onto the necklace and had it, she did not have the feelings that she thought she would have had with this necklace. She basically felt empty. She felt nothing. And it's because of all the resentment that she's carried on when it comes to her mom. And so she's just rawly just venting to her dad. She breaks down. She starts crying. Her dad gives her a, uh, gives her a hug. And one thing that I do love about Angie is I love her relationship with her dad. I, I love it. I truly, truly love it. And, um, yeah, it reminds me, honestly, of my dad and I, when, um, we're, whenever we're talking about our feels and emotions, yeah, <laughs> it actually, this thing actually kind of makes me, the kind of made me miss my dad. Um, I'm actually going to see my family on Christmas because I am, even though my dad and I, we butt heads. And the reason why we butt heads is because we're very much alike and we're very stubborn. So we're just like two sides of the same coin, just like butting heads. But like, um, one thing that I've always said to people is even though we have our moments and differences, my dad has always given me a soft place to land. And um, this was an example of that. And kind of also the reason why maybe in some ways I'm single because I, as a person, I haven't met a partner that meets even close to the standards of what my dad has instilled in me um, as what a, a, a male figure should be in someone's life versus like a dad, a husband, uh, you know, th those kind of things. So anyway, it was very touching. And I, I do love these scenes with Angie because it's, it's just very heartfelt. And also too, what also made me realize is I think this is actually what bonds Angie and Mary together. They are a lot alike when it comes to their upbringing, especially when it comes to their issues that they've had with their moms. And also, um, and Angie at this point doesn't know this yet, I don't think, but also what Mary's going through at the moment with her son. I see a lot of parallels here. Heel, uh, here. And so I can see why Mary feels a closeness towards Angie, actually. Anyway, so very quickly, um, Mary's event has um, arrived, and we find out from Mary, um, she is going through some things with Robert Jr., um, and we know that because we've seen it, but for right now, pardon me, she decided she was going to have this event as kind of a distraction to kind of get her mind off of things before, and she feels like events and things like that 
the distractions kind of help her focus to figure out what she needs to do next. So this is kind of where she's going with it. And so she invited all the ladies. And the theme is Breakfast and Tiffany. So everyone should be dressing like Aubrey Hepburn. And most of the ladies got the memo um, with the exception of a handful. Lisa Barlow is literally wearing the same outfit that Mary wore on Watch What Happens Live. So she did not, and Lisa Barlow's fashion was still well less than desirable because she just looks like Lisa. Um, because we know Lisa will never follow a theme. She just thinks, I don't know. I don't get it. I, ugh, you already know how I feel about that. Um, and then who else did not really follow the theme? Everyone else looked pretty good for the most part. And then Brittany which was also a surprise that she was invited, um, showed up late and was the only one that was not in theme at all, worse than Lisa even. Um, at least with what um, Lisa had on, she was still wearing Tiffany blue. So at least it still followed the theme of Breakfast at Tiffany's, but it just was kind of, it just wasn't really the theme that everyone else went for. Everyone else looked like a version of like Aubrey Hepburn and so it looked great. And so when Heather gets there, she says hi to everyone but Broadwin. And then um, once everyone sits down, everyone gets there. Um, oh, Mary killed me. Because, like, um, I think it was um, Angie who was like, oh, I'm surprised you invited Brittany. She's like, yeah, I invited her so that she would know that I'm not poor. And <laughs> And then from there, Angie says this thing that as she said it, I was like, girl, you know you don't make any sense, right? She tried to say that the china, because um, the plates that they're going to be eating off of are Vers their Versace plates. And she tried to say that Abraham Lincoln knew Versace. And it's like, that. There, there's no way that's true. <laughs> like, at all. And so all the ladies were kind of making fun of her for that. Um, and then from there, um, after Mary does a toast, Heather immediately gets right into it. She's like, thank you for inviting me. It's nice that we're all included in this because it's good that we're all included. And basically, she's sh directly shading Bronwyn. And in her confessional, Finally, for once, Angie, stand, not Angie, but for once, Heather is standing in what she's saying and not trying to be like fake stirring the pot. She's like, no, I just decided I'm going to start the, stir the pot, pot immediately. And for this, I appreciate because, well, I just do. Like for once, she's actually not scurrying around it, getting to it. So, yeah. Child, so when I thought it was going to be Heather, why was it just really Brittany? Brittany, um, so basically Heather hands baton to Brittany, and Brittany was like, "Who? All, everyone looks a lot tanner now, who I was invited on the trip. And so from there, um, you would think she was going to like put her energy into Bronwyn, but she directed her energy to Angie. She is hanging on to the fact that she wasn't invited by someone else I mean, outside of like Britney, she was like, no one has contacted me outside of Mary to an event. So she hasn't, she no longer has no issues with Mary. She's good on Mary. But then she's like, she, she feels a way that Angie did not even invite her to anything. Um, after Angie was invited to her church group thing and the fact that Angie brought some wine to that Mormon church thing. And... <laughs> not Angie putting her on blast immediately with a cl immediate clap back. She's like, you're hanging on to the fact that you, you know, I brought you wine. And then even Whitney in background, she's like, but you're literally drinking champagne right now. And she's like, it's for me. I, I wouldn't expect for you to bring it to a whole entire like Mormon, like church prayer group. And then Angie's like, you're doing, you're doing three guys and you're drinking and you drink every time we see you. So how was I supposed to know any different? I was, <laughs> and Mary's reaction was like, oh, oh. and Mary and everyone is just like, oh, and the party has started. And 
um, in the confessional, Mary, um, the producer asked Mary, like, so like, did you know that he was, that she was dating all these men? She's like, I have no idea what's going on with like Britney's dating history, but I do know that Jared has slid into my DMs and then lo and behold, <laughs> Jared is sliding in Mary's DMs, like all in the DMs saying she's a beautiful spirit, this, that, and this, and uh. And then the producer's like, have you told Brittany? She's like, oh, no, 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 no. I got enough drama in my life, my real life. I ain't got time for that. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And what get, I was gagged when she's like, Jared has slid into my DMs. He really is just as bad as Johnny J. He really wants to be on this show so badly. Child, I cannot. And by the way, they're still going back and forth. I, uh, I, I just had to come up on here because I was like, I am gagged. <laughs> okay. And so somehow, some way, um, it, it moves on from basically um, Brittany and Angie because um, Whitney basically helps me eat the situation. She's like, are you upset that like, that the fact that she brought the wine or are you upset that she exposed that you drink in front of your Mormon people? And that's really what was. She was upset about that because really in Mormon culture, you're not supposed to be drinking at all. So <laughs> Brittany's basically leading a double life at this moment. And so that's kind of what she was really upset about. Um, and then from there, it goes on to the Heather versus, um, because Oh, and then also, then it goes from like, um, Brittany to Bronwyn and Bronwyn basically checks her right away. She's like, girl, why would I invite you to a trip when you have insulted my marriage and institution? And this is literally a trip to celebrate my marriage and institution. So really Brittany had nothing else to say from there. And then that's when Heather chimed in. She's like, well, what about that prenup though? And Bronwyn immediately was like, girl, you do not want to go there with me on that. She's like, let's go. And then that's where the fireworks get started. And um, Bronwyn, Bronwyn is still holding her own. I still just wish she would say more to shut Heather up. But um, she's still, she's, I think she's trying to hold back from going all the way gutter with her and i'm glad she is um but at the same time it's like girl and so basically heather exposes that um lisa basically talked to her about the whole entire thing and brown was like oh okay nicely so nice that you did that and and um mary did try to time and she's like look um, Bronwyn really is trying to be friends with you and you're making it impossible. Like, I don't know why you don't understand that she's really trying, but she's trying. I don't know what your angle is with this, but she is trying. And Heather's just not having it because she's very much stuck on her convictions and she's trying to go back and forth with Bronwyn. And I don't know why, because she's unsuccessfully doing it, by the way, because then the whole thing comes up about the, the first class seats and all that. And basically, Bronwyn at the end of the day was like, it's my trip. And at the end of the day, everything else, you, you got gifts from us. You got a free trip from us. You got to stay in a nice house from us. You got to hang out. You basically got to go to an indie event for free. Like all this was an all expense paid trip. So the fact that you're complaining about sitting in some seats for 67 minutes, stop it. And she's correct. She's correct. And um, um, basically Lisa tried to throw Angie under the bus for complaining about the same thing. And the producers show that Angie was not really complaining. She was just making an observation. She was just like, I don't know where Sean's sitting. That was literally all she said. She wasn't really complaining. Like, um, um, basically Lisa was trying to do. So I think what, <laughs> what's getting me is that, um, Lisa and Heather, I don't, they think their alliance is stronger than what it is. It's like, you got wordsmiths on the other side. You have Mary who's on the other side. Um, well, right now Mary's trying to be a mediator, but you don't want Mary to be on the opposite side. Cause she does have Bronwyn's back and it's clear that she does. If I was either of them two, I would abort the mission. Cause I don't know what they're trying to do there. But then, um, anyway. But then um, Heather is just like, so then if you, 
you know, if, if this wasn't, if you did, if this was a gift and all the trip and stuff, then why would you buy yourselves a first class seat? So why would you stay in first class while the others stay in coach? She's like, because I paid for the trip with my credit card. And I was like, and there it is. Like at the end of the day, why honestly, the way I would shut this down immediately, I, I would just say quit pocket watching. Because all of this is just charting off to pocket watching. Like, why are you all in my pockets? Go get your own business and find it. The end. So after basically Bronwyn said what she said, um, really, Mary is literally this whole entire time, she is truly trying to be the mediator because, and we know why, because Mary needs people around her more than ever to help her with what she has going on. Like this was truly supposed to be a distraction, but like a, a healthy distraction. So um, she does chime in one more time. She's like, look, she really wants to resolve things. And then Bronwyn does give her a soft landing. She's like, look, I really did have the intention of inviting you. I even brought you, I even brought your tickets. And then, um, and, and still, Heather is still not budging initially. She's like, how would you be able to do that? You don't have like my date of birth and stuff. She's like, well, someone else here gave it to me. And so she got it. And honestly, she didn't say who, and I'm pretty sure who she got from was producers because she has to give, get the, get that from someone. Right. Right. But anyway, so, um, Heather does finally open up because one thing that Bronwyn kept saying is like, you keep finding a different reason to be mad, mad at me. It's never the original reason. You're just spinning in circles. It's like literally a tornado, AKA bad weather type energy. And so Heather finally like, look, and even like, um, Whitney chimes in. She's like, okay, like we, cause she's trying to reason with Heather. Like, please try to we reason with her basically a nice way of saying we like Bronwyn please stop this <laughs> and Heather basically does end up owning up to her ish and apologizing she's like I'm very guarded like this is a family that I the, a very dysfunctional family that I have adopted because I lost my own family due to like you know being kicked out of the Mormon church so like I am very guarded when it comes to this group and so she's like, I'm sorry I took out my gardeness out on you, but what, but you not including me in this trip that actually really, 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 really hurted my feelings. And it, it, it was a burn, definitely was a burn. And so, um, Heather, um, apologizes, Bronwyn apologizes and leaves, leaves an open space for her. And she's like, look, I am willing to move forward with you still to this point. I just did not want to move forward with you at that point prior to that, because we were not at a good place, but I still do want to try to move forward. And so they finally make a toast. They finally resolve the things and they agree to have a clean slate. And then, um, so they're good. And then Brittany out of nowhere chimes in. She's like, what about me? <laughs> and Mary still being the most logical person at the table. She's like, she's like, everyone's just seated and just going to do this. Then and she's like, okay, well, we're all seated and you have the floor. So yeah. And then Lisa's like, well, a good way to move forward is shouldn't you be apologizing to Bronwyn for insulting her and her husband? And then she does. And then Brahm was like, are you apologizing because you really mean it? Or are you apologizing because they told you that you need to do that? She's like, I am sorry. And so they decide to move forward as well. And then <laughs> this is when Angie asked permission for Mary. Like, hey, I have my grievances with Meredith. And I really, really want to resolve things finally. And so um, she tries to resolve things. And, um, as she's trying to resolve things, um, Meredith goes around in circles and basically says that she's mad at something else now. Um, and that is Meredith's pattern. She will find a way to stay upset. So now I'm kind of confused here on what's happening. And so, um, because again, the way Meredith is describing it, she's making it sound like, um, Brooks is a child. He's an adult. And, like she's basically accusing Angie of going backwards 
And really, it's both of them. They're both doing it. But really, lately, it's definitely been Meredith who's been going backwards with it. But they've both been doing it, honestly. But hopefully, they resolve it. I don't feel like they're going to, but we will see. So basically, Meredith and Angie are going back and forth, and they are not resolving anything because, again, Angie's arguing with Meredith, and things do not get resolved unless you apologize to her and basically um, affirm something that you basically own. Like, ba Meredith doesn't take accountability. She'll never take accountability. She's someone who will run away versus ever take accountability. And this is literally what was happening. And it was getting so heated that they just start yelling and it just was getting elevated to the point where Mary had to chime in and she's like, guys, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. And she was asking them both separately to stop it. And um, she said to both of them, stop it or else I'm going to kick you out of my house. And Meredith spun it and said that she's getting kicked out of the house, even though that's not what Mary said. Mary said, no, if you don't stop it, you're going to get kicked. If you don't stop and listen, you are going to get kicked out of the house. And Meredith is still just like saying, no, 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 no. This is what you said. And basically ends up leaving the house. And Mary, you could tell, is visibly hurt. because She's like, are you kidding me? Like, I did not actually kick you out of this house. I... Like, it's not that deep and you're just going to leave like that. And yep, she is going to just leave like that. So that's exactly what she does. And <laughs> Mary and her, and her confessional shaded the crap out of Meredith's bang. She's like, thank God. Get those Flintstone bangs out of here. And also, too, as they're going back and forth, because Whitney got, gets involved briefly because apparently seth and meredith go to the same school of arguing where they put the phone in someone's face and they always is whitney every single time and whitney grabbed the phone from her she's like if you're gonna get the phone out of my face and then she tried to like you know turn up the volume because we couldn't hear it because at least this time meredith had like the actual podcast playing so we still did not hear the whole entire podcast and we still did not get the receipts um all because uh, Meredith got upset and threw and gr grabbed her phone right back. And <laughs> Winnie and her confessional has that dreadful, like toupee looking bang, like basically making fun of Meredith. And I am not going to hold you. It was probably one of the first times where Whitney had me cracking up. I, I was dying. But anyway, the episode ends though, where she got kicked out. That is what happened. Basically, she got kicked, um, and she didn't really get kicked out. She left. She did not get kicked out. That's actually really what happened, but neither here nor there. That is what's happening, and that was the end of the episode. And sorry if I kept repeating myself. I may or may not have a glass of wine while watching this. Uh, yeah, I definitely had a glass of wine. But anyway, <laughs> um, overall, it was amazing, chaotic episode of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City per usual and I know I mentioned at the very beginning of the episode that I did not know the name of the episode is called Kiss Kiss Bangs Bangs and it makes sense because child again Meredith's bangs were a hot ass mess but anyway that does conclude the review and the video please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content it's your girl sharon aka the melanin nostalgic runner and i will see you next time bye